What's up, what's up? You know what time it is, man. It is five star matchups. And you know I cannot wait because, man, we got a lot at stake this weekend. And it's a lot that's going to be riding on this game, man. And I can't wait to dive into it. But a couple of housekeeping things, man. Make sure you hit that like button on this. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And the giveaway. Don't forget the holiday giveaway. If you have not submitted, arthemotes.com. Make sure you tap in up there so you can submit for the holiday giveaway. The announcement will be on December 26th, live on the podcast. All right. Now, with that housekeeping out the way, let's tap in. First matchup we got to look at, man, between the Raiders and the Steelers has to start with this quarterback, Derek Carr versus Mika Fitzpatrick. Now, Derek Carr, man, is one of those guys that is really good and flirts with elite, but at the same time, he can be very inconsistent. I think of him more as a really high-end streaky passer versus a just top-tier elite quarterback who can do it week in and week out. When you watch him at times, I think he gets a little bit too aggressive. I think that at times his decision-making isn't always the best. But at the same time, he is an unquestioned leader out there, and he is a big part of that team's success. When he is playing well, that team plays well. When he turns the ball over, obviously that team struggles. And for uh, Derek Carr, man, he does turn the ball over. It's nothing crazy but 11 interceptions. He's sitting 2-1 to one in terms of uh, touchdown-interception ratio, and that is where Minka Fitzpatrick comes into play. Minka is due. He's due for another big-time splash turnover. And watching him on tape these previous games, he's been flirting with it. He's been close. He's had a couple of near misses, things that might not necessarily jump out to the casual viewer. But for the people that are understanding what he's trying to accomplish, yeah, it's only a matter of time. And I feel like this is one of those weeks because Derek Carr has been shown this ability to not just, you know, make some high-level uh, throws, but... He'll also throw some ones where you're just like, Derek, I don't know what you were looking at. And that is where Mika comes into play. That is where Mika has to capitalize this week, especially. And I feel like he will. So that's why this is the first one right here, man. We got to make sure that Mika capitalizes on Derek Carr's mistake whenever it happens. Because it will happen more than likely the third quarter. But either way, got to take advantage of this guy when he makes a mistake. So that's the first matchup that we got to talk about. The second matchup that we're going to dive into Got to talk about those outside linebackers from Vegas, Chandler Jones, Max Crosby, two dudes that can get it done at a high level, two dudes that can win one-on-one -on -one matchups, and they do it in a variety of ways. When you're talking Chandler Jones, he's more of the super skilled uh, craftsman. You know, um, at times he looks like he's just cruise control out there because he's so smooth with it, but he's very efficient in terms of his hand usage, in terms of setting up rushes, combo rushes, and things like that. And that's the challenges that he presents. Obviously, you know what he's done in his career, but we're just focusing on this year. And even with that, he's still one of those guys you got to be aware of. Now, when you talk Max Crosby, a.k.a. Mad Max, this dude has been going off, especially since joining, uh, uh, especially since last season, where he really kind of uh, put himself on the national scene. But when you watch Max, Max is definitely skilled, but Max, he wins in a different variety. He wins in terms of just being relentless. You watch how hard he plays. This dude, it doesn't matter who you put over there to block him. They're going to have to really put their lunch, uh, have their hard hat and lunch pail, man, because he's one of those guys that's going to take them to their limits from a conditioning and physical um, just standpoint because of how relentless he plays. But at the same time, like I said, man, he is a really good player. Have double digit sacks on the season, and he does not like he's slowing down. So when you think about Chooks and Dan Moore, this is where it gets interesting because Chooks and Dan have definitely been playing well at times. I think Chooks has had a really good season this year in terms of his consistency and just raising his overall level of play. But when we talk Dan Moore, we know, man, it's been a little bit up and down at times, but he's also been a guy that has been a positive contributor to this offensive line's efforts. And with both of these dudes in one-on-one -on -one situations, it will be very challenging. But the thing that I feel is this, man, I do think that Matt Cannon is going to do certain things to protect these two individuals in terms of the tackles. But when they do have those handful of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, that is where they have to win. That is where Chooks and Dan have to hold their own. And I do anticipate them doing that, man. But this is one of those matches we definitely got to have our eyes on. So that's why I was the second one, baby. But now it is time to go to that third matchup. And here, this is exciting for me. But it's also nerve-wracking for me, man. Because we got Devontae Adams, who we know is all world. 
arguably the best receiver in the game right now. I know Justin Jefferson is having a heck of a season, and rightfully so, but if you look body of work, Devontae has been on one of those ones, and this is considered a down year for him, which is crazy. But he is one of those guys, man, that really makes it challenging at times to deal with the Raiders offense um, because of what he brings to the table as an elite number one wide receiver. Just the certain things you have to do coverage wise and obviously our corners, they're going to have their hands full with Devontae. Um, whether we're talking Cam Sutton, Levi Wallace, any other guys that we probably will sub in as well. This is one of those ones where it could potentially be a little bit tougher on them, depending on how we decide to play the run with Josh Jacobs. So it's going to really be a pick your poison here. But Devontae is definitely one of those guys that we're going to have to have our antennas up wherever he is located at in the slot, front side of the formation, back side of the formation. They will take shots with him. They will force feed him the ball. He is that type of guy. Just think how AB was when we had him. So in that concept or in that uh, in that sense, yeah, we're going to have our hands full with that, but I do feel that if we fully commit to minimizing Devontae, we can accomplish that, but we would really have to commit to it, but we'll see how that goes because obviously we know that we have other things to tend to, but this matchup right here will help us out a lot as we're talking about defending that pass game, defending, you know, a Devontae, a Darren Waller type, a Hunter Renfro type, or even when they go to the running game, right, with Josh Jacobs. This is the matchup right here where we got to win. This is the matchup right here that I feel is the great equalizer. Cam Hayward versus Jordan Meredith. Jordan is not their starting guard. It's Dylan Parham, third round draft pick out of Memphis. He got hurt last week. I believe it was a knee injury. And he left the game midway through the second quarter. He's been limited throughout the week. Even if he does play, I anticipate him being really compromised. If he does not play, this is the guy that you're going to get, Jordan Meredith. And, man, this is one of those ones where Cam has to dominate. This can't be a close matchup. Cam has to dominate this matchup if we get Jordan out there because that will be the difference. Um, being able to win the line of scrimmage, being able to set um, <clears throat> to reestablish the line of scrimmage, <clears throat> excuse me, stuff like that when they're trying to run with Josh Jacobs. Cam Hayward has to be that guy. When they're talking about trying to take some of these shots downfield, the Devontae Adam routes, those are going to take a little bit longer. That's where Cam has to win. That's where Cam cannot allow the double moves. And I just think that this is a matchup where he is going to have a great opportunity, man. So, Cam, give it to me, baby. I need you. I need you. I need you. This show we. Let's keep it rolling. But now it's time for that fifth and final five-star matchup. And this is important, man. I put it Steelers versus Steelers for a lot of reasons. This game is going to be filled with emotion. This game is going to be filled with passion, the elements, the holidays. I mean, it's just so much that is going to be on the table for the Steelers mentally. Kenny Pickett, first game back from the concussion. New helmet as well with the visor. But then you also have it's Christmas Eve. Man, you know, for the fathers on the team, they're preparing to help Santa Claus out in the in the elves, you know. But then you also have the Immaculate Reception team, you know, the 50th year of that game. And what that meant, the retiring of Franco, Her uh, Franco Harris's jersey. But then we also have the passing of Franco Harris and the emotion that's going to be surrounding that as we remember his life, his legacy. I mean, this is one of those ones where... If you're talking about distractions, both positively and negatively, this is 100% one of those games where the Steelers are going to have ample reasons to be distracted, ample reasons to not be as focused, ample reasons to potentially, you know, check out. This is one of those ones, though, where we have to make sure that we are buttoned up mentally, man. We have to stay locked in. The Raiders team, they're a good team, absolutely. But we can handle them, and we can handle them if we do what we're supposed to do. But we have to make sure that we're buttoned up in between the ears because of all of those things that I just listed. And that is not even all of it. You know, it's just plenty of stuff that these guys are handling right now. And yeah, this is just another opportunity for them, though, to, you know, kind of have to show those skills of compartmentalizing and going out there and focusing for 60 minutes, man. But, you know, those are my five star matchups for Saturday night's affair. You let me know your thoughts, though, man, um, on this matchup on these game or, or excuse me on these matchups and in this game man if there are other matchups that you think we should be looking into or that you might be looking into 
But either way, man, hope you have a amazing Christmas, happy holidays, and stay warm out there for my people that will be in the game. So with that being said, appreciate you for tuning in. And until next time, baby, peace.